So flight's taken off in a few hours, and like you guys are aware, I try my best to make sure that I always have sufficient protein wherever I go, and this is definitely the case in airports and on planes. You get dehydrated on planes, your hunger signals are gonna be distorted. Not only do you need to drink more water than you think you need to, you should also pack your lunch. So one thing that will make it incredibly easy to avoid eating a cheap meal that you don't wanna eat at the airport is simply taking an extra 20 minutes and prepping your lunch beforehand. All you need is Tupperware, and you need to be cognizant of some of the TSA rules. You can totally bring steak, that's no problem. You can totally bring toast, cheese bread, which I use as sandwich slices. You just need to be careful about liquids and quasi-liquids, so like a yogurt or even a mashed potatoes. Those will get you hung up and make you go through security again. But if we're just bringing solid food through TSA, in the US it is completely okay. So we'll cook this, take 20 minutes, and you'll see how fucking delicious it's gonna be. After a few minutes in the oven, we have our sandwich bread ready. And we let this steak cook just a little bit. Now we're gonna slice it. And it's a little bit rare, you can see. Not too bad, but that's totally okay. You know why? because we are going to put this in our glass Tupperware container and the steak's actually gonna continue to cook on itself. And so it is okay to cook it about a shade less than how you wanna eat it because that's how it's gonna be when you're on the plane actually eating your food. So, let's put it in. I'm not the plating master. You guys give me all that feedback all the time. But I can cook delicious food very quickly. So we can just wrap these, stack them, and wrap them. Package them, ready to go in the movers here. Gonna eat well today. What's up guys, just landed in San Diego, coming in from Austin. You guys saw that I prepped my meal before I got on the plane. So of course I didn't bother snacking on a bunch of crap, a bunch of the Cheez-Its, pretzels, or any of the fast food that's available to most of the obese Americans who surrounded me at the airport. First thing I'm gonna do after landing in San Diego is go to my favorite Gucci food grocery store. That is the grocery store that turned me on to Cabo Chips tortillas that you guys see me posting almost every morning. They're delicious. Gotta make sure I got my food lined up for the weekend so I'm not forced to eat shit restaurant food unless it's my choice. Everybody's favorite, it's meat time. When I'm buying meat, I'm very careful to read the wording on the labels, like a lot of other products, but meat is particularly sinister. You look at these two ribeyes, they look nearly identical. One's $13, one's $12. The problem is one of them is organic, the other is not. What I'm convinced is going on at grocery stores is brands like Simple Truth, which is Kroger's main brand or main healthy brand, are using these products as loss leaders to convince you that their entire line is organic and healthy. And they're actually making their margins, getting you to overpay on a slightly less expensive, but way lower cost input product from a cow that is eating a bunch of crap, probably canola oil, a bunch of corn, anything that they can do to fatten it up and sell it to you at a high price point riding the coattails of the good brand equity that they're building with actual organic products. Along those lines, when you're consuming meat, one of the reasons why I consume organic meat when I can is a lot of American animals are fed products that are not legal to feed animals in like 150, 160 other countries. Pork is a product like that. I try to get organic pork 
They did not have organic bacon at Ralph's, so the best alternative that I could find was salami that's imported from Italy, because hopefully, if it's actually imported from Italy, you never know, a lot of food fraud, that Italian pig is gonna be fed a healthier diet than its American counterpart. For those of you who are balling on a budget or prepping for a disaster, canned meats are a very affordable option for you to get high quantities of nutritious protein in you. Tuna, which is high in mercury, or salmon, ideally fresh, will help you get to your protein goals. And this is incredibly important, for particularly for people who are bulking. You need to always have protein accessible. You never need to have the option of eating chips instead of a, a protein dominant real food meal. And having these always available makes that a reality. When I'm picking up eggs, the only word I look for and the only word I care about is organic. Uh, Cage-free, pasture-raised, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really know what that means because when you get technical about it, lawyers will probably figure out a way to define anything as cage-free and anything as pasture-raised. What's a pasture? How big is it? What's a cage? How big is that? Those words don't mean anything to me. I just wanna get organic eggs. I'm not super picky about this, obviously. If I go to restaurants, I'm not getting organic eggs there. If I am going to restaurants, I try to get them poached to avoid them being cooked in seed oils. But when I'm getting them from the store, I get these Gucci organic eggs. So as we know, Ralph's doesn't have the Gucci tortillas, the Cabo Chips brand that I love. They don't have the Canasta brand either that I prefer and I've ordered online and told many of you guys too. But they do have tortillas that are devoid of seed oils. And so between these two, uh, both of them are non-GMO. Both of them look nice on the outside. But if you actually look at the ingredients on the organic one produced by Mission Tortilla, you'll see that there are seed oils where if you look at the ingredients, and this is a key theme on the tortilla factory ones, you'll see that there's not. So they don't taste quite as good as the Cabo chips, but they're accessible. And I don't eat Gucci food every meal of every day. I make do and it's gonna taste great. Rice, very common meal for bodybuilding bros and regular people around the world. When you're buying rice, you wanna be careful of the type of rice you're consuming because a lot of rice, particularly brown rice, is very high in arsenic. Basmati rice is lower in arsenic than both regular jasmine white rice or brown rice. And this is also non-GMO. So that is what I'm gonna go with today. Pasta is obviously gonna be part of the diet this weekend. And there's a couple things that I try to make sure of when I'm buying pasta and pasta sauce. The pasta, I want it to be organic because like dairy products, I've found that if I'm eating GMO uh, wheat products, GMO flour products, they make me inflamed. They'll make my nasals congested, uh, make my skin itchy, and probably make my joints inflamed too. And this is something that I want to avoid, and everybody should, particularly as we get older. So this is why I'm going with organic pasta. With the pasta sauce, the main thing I'm concerned about is if they're using any seed oil. So you always want to read the label. No matter how expensive the pasta sauce is, a lot of times they'll use a seed oil. So read the back, see if you can find some extra virgin olive oil, this is organic. I'm a little bit less picky about organic, non-organic for a pasta sauce, but I'm still concerned with avoiding seed oils. If you're gonna be enjoying pancakes or waffles like I'll be, make sure you read the label closely when you're buying maple syrup. I'm holding two bottles. One of them is maple syrup, one of them is not. Both of them look like maple syrup. How do we know? Okay, this says organic maple syrup. What you want to be careful for on the scam products is they just say syrup. Syrup can be anything. It can be corn syrup. It can be high fructose corn syrup. Now Log Cabin says, thankfully, there's no high fructose corn syrup. But if you turn around, there's just regular corn syrup. So this is not maple syrup. Maple syrup itself is a low glycemic index sweetener. I consume it liberally with my sweet potatoes, with my pancakes, with my waffles. I think you probably can too. Try it out. Just make sure you're getting the real stuff. Depending on the food product, I'm not always incredibly picky about getting organic versus not organic. You guys have seen my transformation photos. To be honest, a majority of my transformation came eating non-organic food. But as I've gotten into my mid-30s, I'm more careful about inflammation, and I've become aware that dairy produces an inflammatory response in me. 
One thing that I noticed is when I switch to organic cheese and butter, I don't have quite the same inflammatory response. My joints feel better, I don't feel congested, and I'm not alone. And I spent a bunch of time with Zach and Ashley Homel last summer in Indiana. I would cook with organic dairy for them too. And Zach for years could not eat pizza. He would get terrible heartburn. It just wouldn't sit well with him. But when he switched to organic dairy products, all of a sudden he could eat that and his allergies weren't acting up. So if you have troubles processing dairy food, maybe try an organic version. Now it's time we look for supplemental cooking oils if I don't only want to cook with butter. So a lot of you guys have probably seen this Expeller Pressed Canola Oil Organic. To be frank, I don't even know what that is, but I know it's still canola oil and I know that the extraction process of canola oil is not something that I want any part of. So I don't care if it's organic, I don't care if it's expeller pressed, I don't want it at all. Another option that I used to consider and I actually mention as a decent option in my recipe and diet book is avocado oil. Avocado oil itself is generally safe to consume. And even this brand, Primal Kitchen, I really like their brand. They will make uh, products with cleaner ingredients, whether it's mayonnaise, whether it's ketchup, products that are traditionally not very safe to just blindly buy, Primal Kitchen's pretty good. Unfortunately, over 90% of avocado oil sold in the United States is fake. If I had to put my money, I'd actually think that Primal Kitchen's is probably real, but because the entire lot of avocado oil sold at grocery stores is so fraudulent, I'm just gonna avoid olive oil altogether. So then we have olive oil. All of these look basically the same. They're all extra virgin olive oil. So which one am I going to select? Well, you see this first one is from Italy. And I'm pretty sure from talking to my boy Martin Ehrlich, um, as well as reading a bunch of content and understanding how the mafia works, I do not want to touch olive oil that comes from Italy because like any good drug dealers, a lot of them are cutting it up with cheaper oils and selling it to you at an inflated price, but they're putting stuff in the bottle that you don't want to eat and you don't even realize you're eating. So the next option, we have California Olive Ranch. It's a pretty good brand. I've actually bought this bottle before, but the reason why I'm not gonna buy it again is because it is a multi-sourced olive oil bottle. And what happens when you're buying multi-sourced products, whether it's wine, whether it's any sort of food, olive oil, it makes the producer more susceptible to sourcing a portion of it from somebody who's really trying to cut corners and people who are really trying to cut corners are gonna be more likely to stuff you with stuff that you don't wanna buy. So when I'm buying olive oil, I make sure that I'm getting it from California. Is it a completely foolproof option? No, it's not, nothing is. I'm sure I'm consuming fraudulent olive oil at some point, but this is how I've hedged my risk so that I'm comfortable consuming it on a regular basis. Now, you don't have to cook with an oil, obviously, or, or one of these oils. There's coconut oil, which I use. There's ghee, which is clarified butter, also an excellent choice that I use, and duck fat uh, or beef tallow. So a lot of different animal products uh, make for really, really good cooking lubricants. So just make sure you're smart when you're choosing what to grease your pan with as the options range from delicious and tasty to carcinogenic and evil. Everybody knows if you're trying to lose some pounds, drinking beer might help build the beer gut. We all know that beer has a lot of empty calories. People think it's the carbs, but a lot of it is actually the ethanol. And the ethanol is gonna be present in every alcoholic product we consume because that's what alcohol is, it's ethanol. So I won't be getting beer, but for this weekend, if I'm gonna be drinking, I will prefer to get a red wine. Now, I'm not a wine snob. Uh, I did live near Napa, but I can't taste the difference between a $5, $10, $20 bottle. But when I do drink, red wine or vodka soda is my choice. That being said, because I'm in California and weed's legal, I probably won't be drinking very much this weekend. Normally when I'm buying coffee, I'm getting it at least in a glass jar. I want to limit my exposure to plastic to try to reduce my risk for hormonal distortions, but on the road, they got an organic version. This is my pre-workout, guys. I don't buy pre-workout. I've never had pre-workout. Black coffee is all you need for pre-workout. It actually makes cardio more enjoyable. 
If you've been following me for a while, you know that I view garlic as a cheat code to making almost any food taste delicious. Now there's a few different options when we're buying garlic. We can get the original bulb, but that's kind of inconvenient. You gotta peel the shell, you gotta crack it. If you use a knife and just hammer it, hammer the side of the knife, that's actually the easiest way. But I'm not trying to spend minutes and minutes peeling the stuff that makes all my food taste great. So a couple different options. Most stores will have a pre-peeled garlic clove that's gonna be a little bit fresher. Ralph's has pre-cut, which is gonna be a little bit less fresh, but if I'm cooking it heavily, if I'm throwing this in pastas, it's still gonna taste really good. So I'm gonna go with this option to save some time. Now, I don't know how many sissy salads I'll be eating over the weekend, but if I do eat one, I want some dressing. You guys know that I'm incredibly suspicious of salad dressing and the companies that make them. Now, here are two brands that I generally trust, but I will tell you these are not the same products because both of them look like high quality dressings. But if you look at the label of the Annie's, which is a brand that I go to frequently, you'll see Expeller Pressed Canola Oil. That is not a product that you wanna consume. So, Bragg's, has an extra virgin olive oil based dressing. This is incredibly rare. Probably 98% of the dressings that you see in the store will not have an extra virgin olive oil base. I either use Bragg's extra virgin olive oil to make my own dressing, but if they've made it for me and I trust the ingredients, I think I can get that too. Whether you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, spices are your best friend. If you're trying to gain weight, you want your food to taste as good as possible, and using the appropriate amount of spices will do that. If you're trying to lose weight, you want to avoid cream-based sauces, calorically dense sauces. Spices help you do that because there's almost no calories in them. So get familiar with your spices. You only need to use a few. I love my chili flakes. They are your best friend. Chocolate time. Now, a lot of you guys, when you're getting chocolate, you might get the Hershey's, the Kit Kats, the standard bars. But when I was a kid, especially when I was like around trick or cheating age, I would love that stuff. But the problem is, the reason I don't do that now is every ounce has about 14 grams of sugar in it. Uh, this is 25 grams, but there's more than that, more than 25 grams in an ounce. Um, as I've matured, I have found out that if I slowly lower the amount of added sugar that I eat, it kind of tastes the same. So I like these uh, Tao bars. I don't even know if I'm saying the brand right, but I like them for a couple reasons. Number one, there isn't a ton of added sugar. It's about nine grams per ounce. It's actually a little bit on the high side for what I typically buy, but this is the bar that they have and it doesn't have any seed oils because a lot of these chocolate bars that only have added sugar, they have oils that you don't want to have. So this is why I'm going with this bad boy. It's gonna taste great after dinner. So I don't post about eating ice cream too much just because it doesn't aesthetically look that great, but I do eat ice cream probably, I don't know, five, six times a month. Now when I eat it, like other dairy products, I try to get organic, but I wanna show you something that you should know when you're buying ice cream. Haagen-Dazs has generally been a high quality, well-respected brand, but it's a corporation. And as a corporation, they have pressures on their pricing to boost the profit margins. So you'll notice they're doing a little bait and switch with the ingredients. So this, the vanilla, has ingredients that I would mostly be okay with. But product at the same price point, the pistachio, you can see, has seed oils and corn syrup, right? So when you're paying seven, eight dollars for a pint of ice cream, you don't think you're getting seed oils and corn syrup, but the only way to know is to actually read the label. So we come to the protein bar and granola bar section of the store. This is not a section that I spend a ton of time on, but I will tell you why. Most of these foods are not health foods. People look at granola and a lot of people actually think that it's healthy. But if you want to read the ingredients, you'll find out that they're loaded with sugar and seed oils, which we pretty much want to avoid unless it's like a dessert or just kind of like really craving it. When we're getting into the more conventional protein keto type bars, it's probably best to consider these like dessert. That doesn't mean you can't have them, but you should only eat them if they taste really good and you're craving them. If you're eating a real food protein dominant diet, you're probably gonna get enough protein. And if you're not, eating a protein bar, drinking a protein shake, probably isn't gonna be making the difference. You might wanna consider having an extra eight ounces of meat at lunch or dinner, because that will get you over the hump about two or three times as well as a protein bar or shake. 